The James Webb Telescope just might alter our understanding of the universe. NASA scientist Matt Greenhouse is here to share some of the first images released. Hello there, Matt. Good morning. All right, before we get to all of that, I, I want to talk a little bit about you. I think there's not a one of us who has not laid outside in the darkness and looked up to the sky and wondered what is out there. What are your first memories of thinking about space? Well, actually, I, I had a very similar to memory to what you just described. I was a, a technician uh, working at an observer, ground-based observatory at night, and uh, I took a break and laid back against the windshield of my truck and just looked at the night sky and thought to myself, you know, someday I'm going to come back here as an astronomer. And I did that. Yeah. You know, we think about all the jobs that NASA has provided over the years. And a lot of us focus on the astronaut, which is a big deal. But you have a very specialized area. Explain what you do. Well, on the web, I was uh, responsible for the science instrument payload. Uh, the web has four science instruments and a fine guidance sensor uh, that produce all of the imagery and data uh, that uh, you're seeing. All right, so the Webb Telescope launched this past Christmas. Uh, give us the mission, what was the reason for it, and the things that make it so special and different from Hubble. Well, the Webb uh, is designed to operate in the infrared spectrum. So the light that the Webb is recording has a longer wavelength than red light that our eyes can see. And that's critically important for, uh, to enable the web to see the first stars and galaxies to form after the Big Bang. All right, so there is an end result there. I want more details on that in a second. But what's kind of cool about this is that we just had a segment talking about sports, for example, and team. That's what happens when something like this comes together. It is all about team. Explain to us kind of the, the involvement, which it, it was really around the world, right? Yeah, about 20,000 people worked on the web and uh, three space agencies, NASA, East, uh, the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency. So the web was a worldwide uh, project And Johnson Space Flight Center uh, and where you are in Houston uh, did play a key role in helping us test the web. Yeah, the telescope is about the size of a tennis court. Uh, cameras were built to operate at extremely cold temperatures. How cold are we talking about? Almost minus 400 Fahrenheit. Oh gosh, very, you have to dress very, in layers. Very yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, dress in layers. Okay, uh, okay. So, and again, it, it's 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 mind-boggling what it is doing. Explain to us again. Back it up for us a little bit. So, what we're seeing right now in the images. In fact, these are images that have first came back. What was it like for you to see these images for the very first time? Well, I, for me, the the release of the first imagery, when I saw it for the first time, it was actually more exciting than the launch itself. Uh, the images are amazing. And uh, one of the things that makes them amazing is Webb's ability to see fine detail. Uh, Webb will give humanity its very first high definition view of the infrared universe. And you can see that in these uh, first images uh, that represent just a few days of data taking. Yeah, so deep field, the, the, it's the deepest infrared image of the universe yet. What do we learn from that? Well, uh, in that image, there's an object uh, that we're seeing back. They were seeing that object back in time, 13.1 billion years. Wow. Uh, the universe is only 13.7 billion years. So it's showing that the web uh, has the uh, cosmological reach, as we call it, the power to see uh, the uh, epic of formation of the very first uh, stars and galaxies in yeah. the universe. As we go through these pictures here, so it's like the evolution of galaxies, the life cycle of stars, uh, other worlds outside of our solar system. Now that's crazy talk, other worlds. <laughs> The, the search for life is no longer the stuff of science fiction. It's very much a major science objective of NASA. Today, we know that all stars have planets, and we have learned how to measure the chemistry of their atmospheres. And uh, with that ability, we are going to begin searching their atmospheres for chemistry that is indicative of life. And the web will begin that process 
uh, focusing on planets that are somewhat larger uh, than the Earth. Yeah, I remember interviewing the crew uh, that put together or sent out launched Hubble. And uh, the, the one of the astronauts said to me, when he was up in space, he looked back at Earth and thought, this is an amazing, beautiful thing, and it can only be one of a kind. We have to be the only ones because of how beautiful and perfect it is. Then he said he turned around and looked out to the deepness of space and said, <laughs> good gosh, <laughs> there is so much out there that there's no way were the only ones. Uh, what we found out over the decades, ever since NASA was created and other space programs, is that what we intend to do up there has great benefit to us down here as well. What are some of the benefits, uh, the side effects of the, of the research to put that Webb telescope up there that we can use in everyday life down here? Well, we've had spin-off technologies. Um, some of the uh, optical equipment that uh, you use to uh, have your eyes examined and cataract surgery and so forth are spun off uh, from technologies uh, developed for the web. Um, the, uh, there are a, a, a range of technologies that web developed that will enable uh, successor missions uh, to be developed. Whenever NASA develops technology, it finds uh, lots and lots of uses uh, throughout uh, uh, all aspects of industry. Yeah, if you could press a button and travel anywhere you wanted to go in space, where would it be? Oh, uh, I don't know. Um, you know, I'd like to walk around on Mars, and since it's you know kind of obvious that uh, the surface of Mars used to look like the surface of Earth, um, it will be exciting if we can find uh, evidence of life on Mars, but that's a different mission. Well, Matt Greenhouse, I think next time I talk to you, I want to talk to you about a study on the greenhouse effect because you have the perfect last name for that. But uh, thank you so much for joining us. What an exciting job you have and what exciting pictures you've brought to us. Thank you for having me.